what you guys got another video here for you quite a few people were interested in nt light and how you can use it so i'd do a quick overview video here and show you the end result of what you can actually achieve with this software if you want to see a more in-depth version then let me know in the comment section below and i'll make that video okay so i've got the nt light software open here now i will say that this software is very powerful and it's probably going to end up breaking your operating system if you don't know what you're doing you need to know what to remove and what not to remove. This is not going to be a full step-by-step -step guide because that will take over an hour to explain exactly what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, some people may want to remove some stuff and some people may want to keep it. So that is basically why I'm not going to be making that type of video unless a lot of people really want to see it. We've got some auto saves over here, which is the ones that I've worked on before. Now I've understand how to work this software because I've used it many, many years. Uh, but if you don't know how to use it, then probably this isn't for you. So let's take a look here. We've got the image here. This is pointing to our users and my username, desktop and toolkit and DVD. That was the uh, ISO that I created using uh, the MSMG toolkit. It's still the same ISO inside here. I've extracted it. I can now use this and open this up in NT Lite and remove some more stuff uh, because this tool is very, very powerful. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, if you're using a ESD file, it will need to convert it. Now, when I finish ripping out all of the stuff that I have uh, don't want in there, I will literally convert it from a WIM format back to an ESD format. So I now need to convert it back so I can mount it and then remove more stuff. And I'll show you exactly how you do that. So I'm loading that up here. So if you've got an ESD file type ISO, windows you will need to uh, convert it to a dot win so we've got this uh, mounting up here it's now just going to mount it onto uh, our software so we can uh, then take a look at it so there we go it's now gone green that means it's um, mounted and we can now literally click on one of these auto sessions and this will automatically load up all of our pre uh, set configurations that we've set now, this does take a long time, so bear that in mind. If you're not willing to learn anything like this, then leave it well alone. You can see down on the left-hand side, we've got a load of options available now. Uh, components, features, settings, services, extra services, updates, drivers, registry, unattended, and post setup. Click on the components area. You're going to get a warning, and this is where you're going to be able to remove components from Windows 10. You can see here, drivers, hardware support, ISO image, localization, media, network, remoting and privacy system and Windows apps. So inside this area, you'll see there's loads of Windows apps that you'll be able to remove. Well, I've already removed loads here and there's system apps as well. And you've got to be careful with what you're removing from that build because it will break your operating system. Same as inside features. If you start removing stuff that Windows needs, it will break and it won't install and you're going to end up with error messages and all sorts of stuff happening. That is part of the learning curve with this particular type of software. You're going to have to create loads of different ISOs and learn to play with it and work out what works and what don't work. I'm not going to go through this and tell you exactly what to do because even then you're going to get someone saying, oh, I want Windows Search. I want Windows Store and it will just be a never ending uh, series of videos. So that is a choice of the user that wants to disable and enable stuff. You can see here, there's a bunch of stuff inside here that you can turn off and turn on. Everyone has their own preferences to what they want to leave on and turn off. And you just have to work out what works for you best. So you just to, to turn these on and off, enable, disable, you just uh, toggle them like so. You can also do a bunch of other stuff inside here as well. So I just want to point that out. This is also privacy settings in here, start menu settings, uh, Windows updates, all that sort of good stuff. You can mess around with it inside here. Again, I'm not going to go through each individual part here and showing you exactly what I would do because obviously, again, you always get those smart Alex in the comment section saying, oh, but I want Windows search. You know what I mean? So you get that uh, sort of idea. Windows updates, again, you can literally... Uh, choose what you want to do there same with the privacy settings as well now moving on to the services area you can uh, disable some of these from uh, windows if you wish from here but be careful uh, some of those will literally break and brick the system so be careful when you're doing that okay 
Now, sometimes it's easier just to do that from the desktop and run a script and disable those what you don't want rather than doing it right at the uh, installation level here. Updates again, you can uh, add in your updates and whatever it is that you're trying to update into your uh, build itself. Remember, the more stuff you add in, uh, the larger the file will become. So just bear that as, in mind as well. You might want to put in here uh, some uh, certain types of updates that are going to help you uh, make your PC installation a lot more better. Again, adding drivers in is another thing that some people like to do rather than keep downloading and installing drivers. If it's just for you, that is a great feature to have. If you're giving it to other people, they might not want all those drivers to be installed on their system. Unattended, again, you need to enable this feature and you can go through here and enable and disable a bunch of stuff that you don't need during the installation process. This will skip out any sort of unnecessary parts that you don't need. Just remember there's a point of diminishing return when you start tweaking uh, the operating system to its max. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes doing things like that may break the installation process, but also may not also benefit uh, the actual operating system itself by doing it. So just bear those things in mind when you're creating your ISO. Once you've got all your selection done, you can then click create ISO and basically click the process part and it will create your ISO. So let me go ahead and we'll go ahead and put it onto say a virtual machine so we can see what that looks like and whether it works and whether there's any sort of problems. This is the actual installation that I completed recently and you can see here, this is the very latest version that I've done here. I've changed the wallpaper. I've done a bunch of other stuff. I'm speeding this process up so I don't bore you to tears with the whole installation process. But you'll generally see here, it's taken out a lot of stuff that you'd normally have with the uh, regular installation. Now, of course, everyone on the internet wants a different version of Windows 10. So when you create your build, it's designed for what your needs are. You can see here, it's forced me straight away to do an offline account. That's because I've set it up that way. You may want the opposite and have a Microsoft account. If that is the case, then you don't want to be disabling that feature. Hence why. I've skipped that part because I don't need it for this build. Who is this build for? It's for gamers. It's for people that just don't want all the telemetry and bloatware installed on their system. It's for people that don't want to go through here and have to keep toggling everything off every single time. It's going to be forced to be turned off because I've removed it all uh, from the installation process. I don't have to go through here. I have left the most key parts, which are microphone, and I've also left the camera. So for gamers, they will have their camera feed going and also their microphone working. Those features work just fine. I've removed all the other bloatware that I don't need on here. There's also other things that you can do during the installation process, like the update process. I've removed Windows Defender from here. Now I've also got this set up how I like it, so I can manually scan for Windows security updates and not feature updates, but remember, not everyone wants that. That is why I always say to people, it's best to make your own. That way you know what you're doing and you know what you're enabling and disabling and you know what's in it. You know that there's no nasty hidden surprise in there with a backdoor to anything here. You can see I've got my settings here, my file explorer. A lot of the other features have been ripped out. They're not here, uh, like Cortana and Windows Search. There is other programs that have been pre-installed during the installation process. You can see VLC, Google Chrome, and search everything. And again, the task manager here, a lot of people like to look at this performance thing uh, and see the utilization here. This is on a virtual machine here, pretty okay. You can go even lower. You can rip out loads more stuff, but there comes a point of diminishing return where you're gonna break the operating system and cause yourself more problems. The memory usage is very low, as you can see here, 1.1 gigabytes. Uh, in use and then also committed to 1.0. Pretty good uh, for this particular type of build. Nothing's broken, everything works, and this is the point where you have to sort of say to yourself, how far do you wanna go with this thing? Because you can keep removing stuff and eventually it will break and it will start breaking things. I don't need error messages and pop-up boxes popping up on the screen with errors and stuff. I want to work in operating system that works really well. Now, all of those annoying apps have been removed as well, and it won't uh, install those again because I've made sure it doesn't. And you can see here, I've also pre-installed all the Microsoft Visual C++ 
which means all those games and other bits and pieces should work perfectly fine. Now, of course, I can spend more time tweaking and building an even more awesome operating system. But again, that takes time and I just simply don't have it. So I think I'm going to probably draw a line at it at this stage and leave it where it is. I've also got all the bare essentials that most people need here. I didn't want to put antiviruses on here and other things like that. It just complicates things. Offline maps and all those other bits and pieces have all been removed. People feature and also uh, the notifications have all been removed. Everything's been taken out of here, basically. Now you can also go a little bit further and run the debloat script and other things like that if you want to at this stage. It's entirely up to you. You can also run that script for services at this stage. You can also do that during the installation, but there comes a point where you have to say enough is enough. If you start adding loads more programs to this during the installation process, that will make the installation process a lot longer. So the more you add, the longer the installation period. Now, a lot of people have asked me for the ISO image for the installation so they can do it on their PC. That then makes me a little bit more liable, and I'm just looking into the legal side of things to make sure I am not liable in any way, shape, or form. So I just need to look into that a little bit more before I do release it, if I can release it. That's the thing. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Hope this one helps you out, guys. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Have a great weekend. And if you want to see a full version of this, then let me know in the comment section and I'll make that video for you. It will be over an hour long, so bear that in mind. Thanks again. Enjoy your weekend. Bye for now.